Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Brother Brand Ambassador Angela Wolf here. And wait to see what we have in store for you today. Talk about surging, rolled hem. How about beads on your rolled hem? How about, is anybody getting married? Do you know somebody getting married and you want to save a ton of money on a veil? How about some more projects? We have so much for you today. So Kathy and Sarah will be joining us. I can see you all. You were early today. The whole group is joining on YouTube. We got YouTube and Facebook live streaming. We can see all your comments and questions. I cannot wait to see you. So grab your notebooks, grab your tea, and we'll see you back here in just a minute. How are you? Good. How's it going? Good. That was like a must have been a really exciting coming back to the after our ad because there was a little bit of a echo there, but it's gone. So we're good. So everyone say hi to Sarah and Kathy. If you don't know them, Kathy, why don't you tell everyone where you're from and how long you've been with Brother? I've been with Brother since January of 2018 and I live in Northeast Florida. We're fine. Summer fun arrived. <laughs> I'm obviously on the other side, uh, the northern side of the hemisphere there. <laughs> Sarah, welcome to the party. In case everyone hasn't seen you before, tell them where you are and how long you've been with Brother. Yes, thank you. I've been with Brother for just over a year now, and I'm coming to you live from New York. <laughs> awesome. And if you don't know me, I'm Angela Wolf, Brother Brand Ambassador, and we have been hosting these At Your Side live shows since COVID started March of 2020. So I was just looking at the number. I think we're at almost, we've passed two years now, over awesome. 260 episodes. If you want to go back and binge watch over the weekend, go to Brother's YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe as well, and you'll never miss a show. But enough of that. I'm so excited for today. It's National Surging Month. How fun is that? Woo! <laughs> I love it. And there's so much you could do with your serger. So leave a comment. Do you have a serger too? Have you taken it out of the box? I can't tell you how many times I'll go to a class or something and then someone will say, I have a serger. I've never taken it out of the box or I've never changed the thread. You know, the story goes on and on. But once you get over that initial, I don't know, wow factor, <laughs> you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Surgers are super fun to have in your sewing room. And now almost a necessity. If you're sewing knits, it just makes it look so much more professional. But you guys are pushing the serger to the limit today. Your tutorials and projects are so cool. So we're going to go back and forth a little bit. Why don't we start a little bit with Kathy, then we'll go to Sarah, and then we'll go back to Kathy. Um, and we've got a lot for you to see. So you might want to watch and save this to your page. If you're on Facebook, so you can go back and back and rewatch as many times as you like. All, All right, right. So, so I'm going to switch my camera real quick so you can nope. actually see my serger. I see the serger behind you. It's going to look great. So I'll take Kathy out just for a sec till she comes back. Oh, that didn't take long. She's already back. <laughs> I can see your serger too, Sarah. And actually mine's right behind me on my really messy sewing desk because I was sewing <laughs> that sweater behind me. All right, Kathy, we can see you great. So I just want to start out by saying I'm sewing on an older model, but it has, it's the 5234 pace setter model currently, and it comes with a blind hem foot, and I will try to get to that today. It also comes with a piping foot, and so one day maybe you'll see how to create your own piping and insert a zipper with this foot. It has a groove that runs down here, and then it also comes with a gathering foot. So some of this will probably be covered later in the month by other brother educators. So today I'm going to talk about rolled hems and some of the things that you can do with them. Um, 
I love them for decorative purposes, but one thing that you need to know about a rolled hem is that it is an unbalanced stitch. And that means that up here on my thread tensions, I have my needle at four, which is about the standard setting. I've loosened my upper looper tension and I've tightened my lower looper tension. And a rolled hem is good for so many things. This is just rolled hem over fishing line with beads attached. So hopefully we'll get to that today. And um, it would make a nice little bracelet if you wanted to do that or a necklace or something along that line. Um, I've never thought of just doing uh, I don't know about you, Sarah, but have you ever thought of just doing a rolled hem over a fishing line? I've never no. thought. I mean, I, I've put fishing line into a hem, but not just the rolled hem with the fishing line. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. yeah. And adding beading, we're going to have to see this one. This is going to be cool. Yeah, I'm trying to get to my piece of fishing line that's already strung with beads without spilling the remainder of them on the floor like I did earlier. <laughs> So this is what I do. I just, it's, I asked my husband yesterday for fishing line and I tied a safety pin on the bottom just so that they won't fall out. And I left myself a good length of fishing line. One of the things that I like to do, and I'm going to open up the door, maybe let's see if we can get a little bit wider. And right here is the lever for my cutting knife. So I'm going to take that and I'm just going to disengage it. And then I'm going to close the front cover. What I want to do is I want to keep my fishing line to the right of my needle. And then I'm just going to start stitching. Maybe if I can find my foot pedal. Just start stitching over that. And when I'm ready for a bead or two or however many you want, you're just going to take it and pull it up on the fishing line. And then I like to raise my foot just a little and make a loop towards the back and then just stitch some more. So I'm going to just do the one little section and then I'm going to cut that off because I have so many other things to show you that I want to be able to get to it all. I'm looking at that bead. So you took the bead, you wrapped the fishing line around to the back. So you're not actually stitching over the bead. You pulled it to the, oh, nope. I see a big old looper there. See how that loop is? Yeah. And then you take your loose end of fishing line and you just pull it tight. Oh. <laughs> and there's how the beads uh. get attached. That's awesome. I was looking at that earlier going, how are you going to get that over around the knife and the needles yeah. and not have like a blow up? Now I see. That's so cool. Isn't that cool? And you can do that on the edge of fabric as well. If I can find my little um, fabric sample that I had over here in this brother, pile. Brother sewing fans that are watching this, I want to see in the comments, have you ever tried this? This is so cool. Now, this is a new one for me. Oh, look at how beautiful that looks. So it doesn't matter if you put single beads or if you put multiple beads. I mean, it's just whatever you want to do. So for every bead that you have, Kathy, you do the same process. You just bring a little loop to the back and then keep surging. Correct. And then you just pull them tight at the end. Right. Love Brilliant. that. Quick tip. <laughs> Brilliant. So the next thing I want to show is how to make your own wire edged ribbon. There's wire encased in that rolled hem right there. And this time I do want to trim a little fabric. So I'm opening the door. And I'm engaging my knife again. But I want to snap this foot off. 
This is the standard foot that comes with my machine. And I hope you can see it. It has a little groove and a hole. Everybody see that groove in the hole? Yep. Yeah. Now I'm going to get my piece of wire. And this is just thin floral wire, you know, that you buy at the local hobby store. So you insert it in the hole and it lays in this groove on the back. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to snap it back onto my machine. Maybe. <laughs> I, I agree, Patty. She said this would be awesome at the edge of wedding veils. Yeah, it would. And you know how much those are, especially the ones that have beading and everything on the edge? A lot of money. Well, and that's why I've made them for family members who have gotten married in the past. Or even um, I made one for a first communion. You know, they had those little veils that they were wearing. But... Um, so I'm just going to take a narrow strip of fabric. And this is just, I just pulled a little um, scrap of a, um, what do you call it? Of one of those jelly roll cuts. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let me get a hold of my wire back here to help get it started. And that guide hole keeps it from getting engaged in my knife. But yet it still keeps it in the rolled hem. What an easy way to do that. And if you just do both sides, then you make your own wire edged ribbon. It's awesome. Those can be kind of expensive to buy too, right? The wire yeah. ones. Yeah. So they, I would, you know, just whoops, that one didn't catch for some reason. Let's see if we can try this again. You know, it always happens when you're live. Of course. And that's why we love to see it because if we do the same thing, we'll be like, oh, she did that too. We're good. Yep. <laughs> I, I agree. Just, Sandra have it to the left to the right of my needle i think it's what happened this is just uh this is just the standard foot that comes with the machine right it is yeah and so sandra and arnell you probably already have it with your serger i'm adjusting because i can see that it's not catching one of your favorite tools with your serger is going to be a pair of tweezers. And I know one thing that I can do that helps this is I can make my stitch a little bit wider. Do you always, Kathy, do you always have your uh, knife on? Uh, what? Him. Um, not always. And I'll show that to you in just a, a little bit why I don't. Okie doke. Okay, so there it's caught in, so you can see that it it'll hold its shape. Wow. Let me see that hem. That looks just gorgeous. It looks just yeah. like and that's just from a scratch of fabric. Wow. This is scratch of fabric. And here is your wire. Let's see if I can get the end of it. Wow. Awesome. Perfect. Yep. So I use the rolled hem a lot for decorative purposes. Um, if you watched last week's show, I showed the yoke that I'm working on. And this is just straight rows of. Um, Pentux with decorative thread in my upper looper. Beautiful. And so that's a decorative way to use it. But if you want to step it up just one notch, this is a dress that I made for the flower girl for my son and daughter-in-law's wedding. Wow. wow. 
so can you see I did the rolled hem pin tucks in the straight lines, just like I did on the yoke, but then I marked lines about an inch apart going horizontally. Mm -hmm. and I used yep. my sewing machine and I just did a bar tack here wow. and there. And then I went to the next row and alternated. And so then it creates this little diamond shape. Absolutely gorgeous. And I painstakingly placed every um, crystal over every bar tack. Wow. I mean, that if you went to buy that fabric, by the way, because I was looking a while ago for something that was kind of quilted like that in a really unique way without the beads was so expensive. That is just amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Well, and this was an embroidered silk dupioni that I had found too. My daughter-in-law really liked it. So, um, so yeah, I, I asked for the dress back because I figured <laughs> it's a sample one day and here it is. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous. Everybody's saying it's absolutely beautiful. So this is the start of it. As you can see, I've done several rows. But all I do is I mark my fabric with lines. I'm going to fold on the line. And this is where you can either leave your knife up or you can disengage it. But I'm going to change feet and I'm going to put on that blind hem foot. Because it's an all-purpose guide foot as well. And there's a little metal, I mean, a little plastic piece right here, and you can adjust it with this little um, screw right here to make it go right or left. And what I want is I want just to pierce the fold of the fabric like I would if I were um, doing a blind hem, but I'm actually just doing a rolled hem. So I'm just going to start stitching and I'm guiding the fold of my fabric right along this edge. This is not something that you do in a hurry. This is something that you do for the wow effect. <laughs> That's a good word, by the way, because everyone is, I think there's like 20 wows in a row. <laughs> it's definitely the wow effect. <laughs> So there's another row and what I would do, see how I've drawn the horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. Now, if I take this to my sewing machine, I would go and just stitch these two together. And I take my tweezers and I hold them as I'm stitching a bar tack. Just a, a bar, just a simple bar tack. That's it. Just a simple bar tack. That's all it takes to hold them. When you're sewing the bar tack on there, so are you putting your feed dogs down? You just hit the bar tack stitch on your machine, or how are you doing it? What I usually do is I um, usually just use a real narrow satin stitch because mm -hmm. I don't want to put my, if I use the bar tack on my sewing machine, it requires me to attach my buttonhole foot. And gotcha. I don't want that attached. A lot of times I'll have my, um, open toe foot so I can see it more clearly. And I just do a, a zigzag that I have shortened the length to like 0.01. Okay. You know, That's, just so I, it's really not going to move. It's just going to stitch that in place and hold them together. So, so just a couple of quick questions. Now that fabric looks beautiful. Is that just a cotton fabric that you have there? That's just a quilting cotton. But because what you I, want to do is you want to make your block of fabric first before you cut out your pattern. Because this is going to um, eat up some of the width and um, length of it as well. Yeah, well, that's a good tip. And I see some people asking, uh, what what kind of fabrics would this work on? It would work on just about anything, I think, Connie. I mean, I can't think, I mean, obviously not like a faux fur or something like that, but a cotton, dupioni. Uh, any other fabrics you've particularly done that with, Kathy? I've just worked with it on the dupioni and um, 
with cotton fabrics. So wow, that's I gorgeous. Can't really say. Oh, Fran, I was thinking the same thing. Fran wants to know how many hours did it take to make that dress? <laughs> I lost track. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> You know, it's a funny story because I was actually working a show and I took the fabric with me and whenever it was slow time at the show when we didn't have customers in the booth, I just stitched. That's awesome. So it was right, fun. Sorry. Everyone's <laughs> saying that's amazing. Uh, Cindy, how did she attach the beads? She mentioned it was very painstakingly. Did you do it by hand? The beads by hand? What? Oh, the, the um crystals. the beads on the dress. The crystals on the dress were the hot fix type crystals, not oh, a gotcha. brother And so it's they have this little tool that you can pick up one at a time, and it was one at a time, but it was after the construction was completed. Okay. Indeed, no, your sewing machine feet will not work on your serger. That would be a no-go. You, you, If you have a sewing machine, there goes my chair again. <laughs> if you uh, have a sewing machine, those feet go on your sewing machine. The serger is totally separate. It's a whole different feed dogs, uh, the length and all that stuff. So don't do that. All right. Okay, should we move on or do you want to go to Sarah? Well, I, you know, come back to us because we got a few. Why don't you come up back on camera so we can answer some of these questions before we move on? Then we'll go to Sarah and then we'll go back to you because you've got a, quite a few other little things to show us there. I, Julie, I agree. Learning different types of fabric in the class. Um, and I'll get to these. I'll have, there you are. So do you surge? Sheila wants to know, do you search all the straight lines first and then do the bar tacks? I'm assuming, yes, you just showed that. Yes. All right. Let me lower my chair a little bit. All right. And then, oh, can you sew on corduroy? Yeah, you could go on. You'd have to be careful because there's little nubs on the corduroy, but I've not tried it. All right. Something with a nap might not um, show up quite as well. Yeah, because the the rolled hammer, the narrow rolled hammer is very small. You yeah. could make it wider, though, if you want to, I guess. Um, have you ever put a bead on there instead of a bar tack? Oh, like just grab those two pieces and did a hand bead? I, that would be pretty time consuming, too. That just adds a few more hours to your. <laughs> That's hand work. And in my book, it's a four letter word. <laughs> Oh, gosh, this is wonderful. Um, I think that was everybody. If you had another question, just bring it up and I'll go back and check. There was a few people asking about the bar tacks. Now, she kind of explained that you could use a bar tack, but she used just a regular stitch with a very narrow stitch length, which is like a bar tack. All right, keep those rolling. All right. Zigzag. A zigzag. Ask, can they do this on a um, 1034? And the answer is yes. If your mm -hmm. machine, if your serger will do a rolled hem, this is a three thread rolled hem, and I know the 1034D serger, so I, I can tell you, yes, you can. Yeah. And I have, I have the PS 3734T, that's the pace center, and you could do it on there as well. There you go. Gwen, I you now that you're here, you'll never want to miss another show. I'm telling you. And you can go back and binge watch. <laughs> We've got two years of shows. Definitely. Everybody, okay, let's see. I think that was about most of the questions. The other ones we already answered either previously. Oh, here's one. For your uh, rolled hem, did you use the right needle or the left needle for your uh, narrow the, rolled hem? Just one needle and it's the right needle. Right needle. Uh, Vicki, is the rolled tuck on the bar tack on the back of the fabric or the front? Rolled tuck on the, on the front. You did it on from the front. front. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, you keep your questions rolling in. Now we'll let Sarah take over because we've got a lot to show you today. Sarah, <laughs> you take it away and show us some of your fabulous projects you're working on. Sure. So I'll just kind of focus in on, so my technique um, 
as usual, revolves around scrap fabric because I love my scrap fabrics. So this is um, an in-progress project, and this is a bucket hat. Oh, my God. Is that cute? <laughs> it doesn't stand up yet because I have to make another half and then put it together. But basically, I thrifted two men's Hawaiian button-down shirts. You can see the little... Uh, the little oh. pocket there. It's fully functional still. <laughs> you can unbutton it, put some snacks in there. <laughs> um, so all of these scraps, so these two shirts, they were an extra large and I already made two full bucket hats out of these shirts. I took the remaining scraps. You wouldn't even believe what these shirts looked like. The fact that I got enough fabric out to make another hat is crazy. And I surged all of them together. So you can see Beautiful. all the crazy seams in there. I'll turn it inside out. I can actually picture that shirt. I mean, <laughs> I went going on spring break. I think half of the people on the plane had that shirt on. Did you just yeah. like <laughs> ask them to take it on the way out or what? <laughs> I mean, the thrift stores by me in the summer they put racks and racks and racks of Hawaiian shirts out. Like you, I have no idea where all of them come from, but um, I love them too. And yeah, I just kind of picked two orange ones. You can see they have very different patterns. This one kind of has fish in there. And then this oh, is like like the traditional hibiscus vibe. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think as long as they're either a similar pattern or similar colors, they'll They'll look pretty good together. So I'm gonna switch my camera and I'll show you guys how I piece all that together. This is a great thrifting, repurposing, a great idea for all those, all of the above. Yes. Also, if you're, you know, if you want to honor someone and you maybe have, um, some of their old shirts, you know, someone who maybe passed away. This is a great way to kind of incorporate those items into something new that you could wear. So this is the brim piece right here. And yeah, you could see that pretty good on the panel. Glad that's fitting in the frame. And then what I do is you can see this piece here. This is the sleeve. You see the bell shape and the hem right there. Um, so I basically lay the pattern piece down. And this was a print at home pattern. I, it's all taped together because I printed it on my own printer here. So I lay it down and then I just pack away at the shirt, whatever is left. And I lay it all down to make sure it covers the pattern piece. And then I sew each seam together. And really the only thing that you have to try and remember is to keep the seams straight. So whether you're doing it diagonal or vertical, the lines should be straight because if you curve them, you'll get a curved seam and you want it to just lay flat. So then you take your pattern piece once those are all stitched together. So it's basically like you're making a new fabric. And then once it's all stitched together, you lay the pattern piece on top and you cut it out. Really easy. Yeah. And then I like to incorporate the pocket like I showed you on that half that's already done. So here's another little pocket that I took from the other shirt. And this is the band. And I know that if this is the center of the head, I don't want the pocket right on the center front of the hat. So I just put it off to the side a little bit here. And when I lay the pattern down, I just make sure to cover that part so I'm getting this little piece of the pocket when I cut out. And not sewing over the button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want to leave a little bit of room up here because your seam is going to go like this, and then you'll be able to get into the pocket there. And that's what I did on the sample. I love, Cindy said, uh, <laughs> put your house keys or your car keys while you're out. That would be good, except if I've seen some people's car keys, your whole head would be kind of falling over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those might be a bit heavy, depending. 
Um, yeah, so that's the basic technique there. So, um, and again, my serger comes with the blind, the blind hand foot, the ruffle foot, but what really excites me the most is being able to just super quickly make my own fabric from, from scraps and old shirts and all that kind of stuff. And I'll even sometimes pick out shirts that have stains on them because I just cut around them. And that's something that someone might not buy from a thrift store, but I can buy it and I can work around those stains. I'll just cut them out and sew the scraps together. That is such a good idea. You just gave me a, an idea. My husband, I just went through his closet, not that I go through his closet, but I was putting some things away and I noticed some of his fishing shirts were starting to fray and they're really expensive shirts, but yeah. they're a really soft fabric. Mm -hmm. I should grab some of those and make myself something out of them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so this is just another sample that I wanted to show. This is also from a bunch of scraps that I have, including this was like a test stitch embroidery. And I know on one of our other recent um, live streams, Angela, you asked me if I test my embroideries and sometimes yes and sometimes no. So this was a, an instance where I tested it before I stitched out the full thing. So this is like not a completed design, but it still looks kind of cool. So I incorporated that scrap into this Japanese knot bag. Um, yeah, because I think it just, it kind of looks eclectic. And um, so again, I took the knot band pattern. And by the way, sidebar, the Brother Sews blog just did a blog post on Japanese knot bags. And oh. it was such a coincidence because we did not plan that. But <laughs> I guess it's a hot item right now. Um, so this is my pattern that I made. And because I'm working with scraps, I didn't have big enough pieces to cut a whole bag piece out. So I just split it up into all of these different parts, basically like quilting, right? That's beautiful. And then you just trace over. And I highly recommend if you're doing kind of scrap fabric projects like this, that you get um, a roll of pattern paper because it can be kind of hard to work with computer paper if you need like a bigger piece. So if you go to your, your craft store, your big box store, um, they should have a roll of pattern paper that you could buy for like less than $10. And so you take your paper and then you're gonna trace each little piece of that pattern and add seam allowance to it. So then you have all your individual pattern pieces put together and you could cut your scraps out of each of these little pieces. And you serge them together. And then this is how the knot bag works, pretty cool. You kind of lace this top strap through. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you lace the top strap through this like smaller one on the side. That's and, cute. Yeah, that's how it kind of closes up. and gets a little bunch up there. You know, lately we've been showing so many different techniques for last month was quilting. This is a very much of a similar quilting project, but using the serger to construct it. And I'm just thinking if I have a bunch of scraps, I'm going to be playing on that scan and cut and cutting pieces out, adding seam allowances and drinking my coffee and watching the machine do the work. Yeah, exactly. You can get all of your different uh, brother machines going, the standing cut, the serger, I did decorative stitching on here on my luminaire, kind of hard to see on the black, maybe it's easier to see right there. Oh, yeah. I did all different stitches on each seam, I think. And then here I did kind of a little scrap patch with like free motion stitching. So That's I awesome. kind of crazy on this one. <laughs> I love that that you use that embroidery because there's so many times, I don't know about you, Kathy, but you test your embroidery too. We all do. And then you end up either, what are you going to do with it? It goes usually in a little pile. I might show it as a sample during a show, but incorporating it into a project is perfect. Yeah. There's really nothing else to do with it besides scrap it most of the time. So yeah, I yeah. think it, it still holds value and it's definitely cool to incorporate in a little bag. 
Very, very cute. All right. So come back to us, Sarah, because there's a few questions. And yes, I see all your comments. You want to know what pattern is the hat pattern? Well, two things. One, it's not a brother product, so we cannot share it here. But if you contact Sarah, you send her a private message, or if you if Sarah gives it to me, I can throw it on the blog for you so you can find that, both patterns, the Japanese bag pattern and the other. So yes. either way. <laughs> Uh, but I know that's why I didn't post it, just so in case you're new and you don't realize that. Uh, somebody had a great idea for you, though, Sarah. That yeah. hat, uh, you should use Kathy's technique and do a rolled hem with some wire in there, and then you could move the brim around. Yes, that would be really cute. It would stay up if you flip it. That's a great idea. Yeah, and by the way, you are the only person on this show that, I mean, that can throw on hats nonstop and you still look adorable when the hat comes off. I want to hear her. <laughs> That's fantastic. Sarah has the best hair ever. <laughs> okay, so uh, Sarah, just before we go back to Kathy, everyone was asking, are you using a three thread overlock or a four thread overlock on that? I use a four thread. Um, definitely would get the same effect with a three, but I'm just used to like when I was in college, everything was four thread on all the sergers there. So that's just what I'm used to. And it's a little sturdier and a hat keeps going on and off. And I, I see somebody saying I should make fishing hats for Win and I. I, I should do that and then add the fishing line in there. Maybe you'd be even luckier. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really cool. All right. So Kathy, you still have some more things to show us as well. So why don't we go back to you for a few minutes? Okay, so let me switch my cameras back around. All right. And while she's switching, I can I just saw who just said this. Um uh, that they just pulled their serger out of the box. Yes, I am. I'm laughing with you though, not at you. <laughs> All right, let's move this around. Whew, here we go. You're back up. There you go. Great. Penny, Penny, uncover that serger. <laughs> so there for a while you know i live in the south so we do things a little bit differently and there for a while there were these little pants that had the ruffle on the bottom of them for little girls and i've even seen adults wear them but this uses the three thread rolled hem to make what we call a lettuce edge it gives it that little frilly effect. And on this particular one, I used a thread that had a little glitter strand in it so that it added a little sparkle to it as well. I could see it sparkling. I love that. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. It's cute. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my piece of knit well, let's put back on my standard serger foot. Oh. Grab the right foot. And over here on the side of my machine is something that's called the differential feed. Sergers have two sets of feed dogs. Let's see if I could zoom this in um, tight enough that you could, maybe if I open the door, you might be able to see there's a set of feed dogs here in the front. Then there's an open space, and then there's another set of feed dogs here in the back. So when it's set on normal, or on, in my case, on one, it's feeding at a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that the front feed dogs are feeding in just as at the same speed as the back feed dogs. Now, if I want to gather, I'm gonna turn that differential as high as it'll go, like all the way to two. So that means that the front feed dogs are feeding in twice as fast as the back feed dogs are letting out. To do a rolled hem, I wanna, or a lettuce edge for a hem, I wanna stretch that fabric so I'm going to turn my differential down to 0 0.7. And then I'm just going to start stitching my rolled hem. Let me get 
my little thread tail out of the way. I don't want that caught up in my hem. And a lot of times when I'm doing this, I like to make my stitch length just a little bit longer. So instead of having it on R for rolled hem, I've got my stitch length. Let's try 2.5. See what that looks like. And if you want, you can even stretch your fabric as you're stitching. You just want to make sure that those stitches stay on the fabric. So this is the effect that I get with this. And it doesn't really look like anything. But if you take it and every so often you just pull it, give it a little tug, you're going to get more of a lettuce edge. See how I'm doing that? And that's making it curl a little bit more. Oh, yeah. And sometimes it just depends on the fabric that you're using, too. If it has, and you always want to stitch a lettuce edge with the most stretch of the fabric. Oh, but look that, that added a little bit more. Yeah. And it's just a fun hem to do. And it's fast and quick. So, so you... So when you were you were using the differential feed to stretch that fabric as you sewed, not stretching it yourself then, right? Right. Yeah. So That's maybe if I had stretched from the front and the back, you know, this is pretty stretchy fabric. Yeah. I might have gotten better just straight out of the chute, you know. Yeah, but that looks great. So I think it's a fun thing. I saw a couple of people saying, what's the difference between a rolled hem and a lettuce? Well, you just saw it. It stretches. <laughs> you stretch it and make it wavy. So rolled hems are easy to do, even with decorative thread. Like with this one, I used a 12-weight thread Ooh. to create it. And it was just a 12-weight cotton thread. You know, so just... Do an internet search or go to your local brother dealer and tell them you want some decorative threads and get some 12 weight. The only thing that you have to remember is you have to adjust your stitch length if you're using a heavier thread. Okay. Because it's going to take up more space. And a quick little tip, if you don't want to re-thread your whole serger from the start, is I like to clip my threads back here by the spool. Let's see if we can go back out wide. So I'll clip my thread right here by the spool mm -hmm. and I'll tie on my new spool of thread. And then for that upper looper, I'll lower my tension to zero. And then I'll just take this chain, lift my presser foot so I don't have any tensions and I'll just pull it through. Nice. So that's a quick tip on how to not have to rethread your serger all the way from the start if you just want to change like your upper looper thread. Right. So I know that while you're talking about that, I saw a few questions rolling in too. Uh, when you're using that thicker thread, are you just using it in the both loopers, not the needle, correct? I'm just using it mainly in my upper looper because... Okay. The one thing that you have to just remember is that this stitch is not a um, balanced stitch. It's an unbalanced, which means that I'm going to, I want my needle tension to be the same. I want my upper looper to roll over to the back side. So I'm going to loosen that up a little bit. And I want my lower looper to bring that upper looper to the back. So I'm going to tighten my upper looper thread. Perfect. Does that make sense? That makes sense. You got it, Sarah? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay. So the next fun thing that I like to do with a serger is I like to use it to add lace. So just your standard flat lace that you buy at the 
the store and this is a let's get it nice and straight this is lace added to a piece of fabric for the skirt of a dress lace was even added around the sleeves and around the neck hem or neckline that's There's a sweet no little dress no facings or anything in this. It just makes a quick little little girl's project. I did want, I didn't want the rolled hem pen tuck, so I did use my machine to make my sewing machine to make these other pen tucks. Just press them flat, and again, I made a block of fabric. There's lace inserted bring here. Bring it down just a little bit because we can't see what there. Now we can. Okay, there's the pen tucks. And then there's a piece of lace. And then there's something called a Swiss embroidered insertion. And these wow. are kind of from your heirloom stores. You'll find these. You may even find them at some of your big box stores. But just construct your flat piece of fabric first before you um, mm -hmm. so what I'm gonna do. What I like to do is I have lace and a piece of fabric. I like to take my fabric little glue stick and kind of put little dabs on there to hold it in place. And let's see if you can see. I'm trying to get this so it'll focus. Do you see that longer line right here? This is called the header of the lace. Yeah. I want my needle to fall just to the left of that header. So what I'm doing on my machine, I know that this part of my foot, this little, it kind of sticks up. It's almost like a little fence that sticks up. So that's just where I align it. And I'm gonna stitch and cut off at the same time. Oh, let me put my differential back to normal. That kind of helps. And so it just makes a nice little small seam. So there's the seam. Wow. And then you're just going to take it to your iron and you're going to press it, press the seam to the back. And then, oops. I was wondering why it wasn't wanting to roll over. It's because I had got a little crazy with my glue stick. But there it is. You can just roll that over to the back. Wow. Thank and you. I have a few people asking, what stitch was that again, Kathy, that you used How for that? That was my rolled hem. Wow. Oh, look at that. So there's one that was pressed yesterday. It looks so neat. I know. Isn't it? Yeah. And it's so fast. Um, I love heirloom type sewing. I, I just, it's a Southern thing, I guess. But um, it's beautiful. It's time consuming because in order to do this with a sewing machine, what I would do is I would sew a straight line of stitching to the left of the header. I would trim my fabric close and then I would go back with a zigzag stitch to encase that raw edge. So it's this two step process on the sewing machine, but a one step process if you're doing it by serger. That's great. So that lace you, is so dainty. And you save so much time. It's just, it's crazy the amount of time that you can save. Absolutely. Talking yeah. about the bridal veils. So this is just that rolled hem on sparkly tulle or glitter tulle that my sister had used to decorate a table at a baby shower a couple weekends ago. 
Wow. Great idea. And I know that I've made veils for family members and they have saved themselves several hundred dollars <laughs> just by not buying it in a bridal store. So as a side hustle, I could be the bridal veil lady here in my community and only charge a hundred dollars for a bridal veil instead of the 200 that the bridal shop wants. I've seen them for more than that, by the way, especially if you added those little beads at the end. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But another thing that I like to do is see this little, it's just a plain t-shirt, you know, just your basic boxy t-shirt, but mm -hmm. I wanted to girl it up a little bit. So I added this cute little embroidery applique design that I purchased. And then I took some of the same fabric and did rolled hems on a strip of fabric and gathered it with my sewing machine down the center. If I had a cover stitch machine, I could certainly do it with a cover stitch as well. But um, I don't. So that's what I ended up doing was just sewing it onto the sleeve. But doesn't that make just those cute little boxy t-shirts so oh yeah cute. slide it down a little bit so we can see that applique there it is oh yeah that's very cute so cute and then a little roughly sleeve to go with it so that's another idea for your rolled hems and i didn't repurpose fabric that i bought somewhere else but i had you know, small quantities of some fabric. So I did seam those together to make this skirt, the skirt part for this little dress. Cute. So, and just put pieces together. And the ruffle that's at the bottom has a rolled hem. Very easy to do. It just makes finishing things so much easier. I see somebody saying they checked their serger manual and they don't have the rolled hem. I will bet you, you probably do because it's just a few settings on your machine. It's actually not a specific stitch. I mean, it's a specific stitch, but it's just a few settings that you have to change. So I'll bet you, you can still do it on your serger. I don't know too many you can't do it on. You might not have the blind hem foot, but you can still do a rolled hem. So I don't, I'm trying to get this so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, Oops, went the wrong way. <laughs> we can Sorry. see it. It looks like gauze or something. Is that what it is? It gauze is fabric? The, um, actually, it's a cotton organdy. And I like these to make little pinafores to go over other dresses to shadow through. But look how beautiful that hems. Wow. Hems that edge. Let my camera focus. Looks great. Isn't that Might cool? Close. I can't believe everything you've showed us has all been rolled hem. I it's know. <laughs> so that'll make you want to play with your rolled hem, Sarah. Definitely. So, um, <laughs> the last thing that I will show you, and if you were here last week, you might have gotten a little sneak peek. This was rolled hems over stitching line oh, on layers yeah. and layers of, let's see, how many layers do I have? One, two, three, four, five, five layers of organza. Wow. Take the camera out just a smidge so we can, uh, there you go. That's a lot of layers of lettuce edge. <laughs> that is. It actually and looks like a ball of lettuce. <laughs> but what I didn't show you last week was the matching top. This was so fun to make. And a lot of this is just purchase trims. Let's see if we can go wider and get a bigger shot of it. Oh, but that's beautiful is what I wanted to show you. See this little extra poof right here? There's a bow. And then I just took circles 
and put the lettuce rolled hem edge around the outside and then you fold them and and just make that one little extra poof so cute that adds much to it so that's beautiful it was fun to make i it was something i'd always wanted to make and luckily i had great nieces whose mother put them in pageants so it actually got to be worn there are so many ideas here. I see a few people saying, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to save this. Go back and watch it with a notebook and watch the replay. Definitely. So many cute ideas. I so agree, Sandra. And uh, just a couple questions. On this serger uh, from Brother, some people are asking, you know, what's the best Brother serger that you can buy right now? I put a little link here. Just call your Brother dealer because the ones at the dealer are better because then you can also have, you know, you get the dealer servicing if you need help you might have classes to take all of those extra things but some people were asking about the stitch finger so for your rolled hem on here did you have to remove the stitch finger i did and it is right here all right let me bring you up here there you go so this is what it is and this sits along other stitch fingers that are in the machine and when you remove this one, it allows you to get a much narrower stitch. Okay, there you go. So so maybe the one that the first Lucy, maybe I don't know, maybe your machine can't do a lettuce or a lettuce edge and a rolled edge. Uh, but anyways, a lot of them can, and I would double check because I see a few other people saying that they have a really old machine and they were able to, some of them had to change their needle plate. Every serger is a little bit different, especially if you're not using a brother brand, it might be totally different. Uh, Ann says there's a lot of twirling going around in that little skirt that you had. <laughs> it was. It was. So one thing that I was looking for whenever I got my serger was I wanted it to be able to do a two-thread stitch. Mm -hmm. So that was why I went with the model that I went with is because it has a, um, I think they call it something, a thread converter, something that blocks the eye of the upper looper. And you can also do a rolled hem with two threads versus three threads. Yeah, there's so much. If you have a serger, I would just encourage you, uh, just take a day and go through the manual. You'll be so surprised how many stitches your serger can do. And then also, what feet do you have with your serger? If you have the blind hem, you have even <laughs> more opportunities. There's just, I have my manual with every single serger, every single cover stitch, because I don't know about you, but I keep forgetting how they're threaded if I've not been there in a while. <laughs> so this is a printed out version of my manual for my serger. And I just turned to the page that had narrow overlock and rolled hem stitching. And so it gave me pointers down here at the bottom on the suggestions for the different types of fabric. So look for that in your manual and you can adjust accordingly. But that's usually what I use for a starting guide. Mm -hmm. And I also, if you can't find your manual, if you have a brother machine, go to Brother Sews. I have, uh, I have it listed right down below, brothersews.com. And you can go in there and download a manual. I love that because I'll leave it on my tablet. I also print it out. I've got it highlighted everywhere if I'm trying to look for something <laughs> because I, it's hard to remember all the different tensions where you want to move it things like that so having the manual is definitely key yeah I'm not a big manual girl either but I'm going to yeah. say the manuals <laughs> nowadays I just print off every manual because some of the machines have gotten so technical I want to learn certain things um or you know stuff like that but everyone's saying I definitely have to rewatch this uh good to know you're welcome uh there was one question back a little ways uh when you and i don't remember where she was talking about you were talking about one stitch that you tightened one i want to say it was i don't know if it was the upper looper or lower looper that you tightened oh whenever i'm doing a rolled hem i want the upper looper to be pulled to the back of the fabric it's going to roll the edge of the fabric over slightly yeah. And so in order to achieve that, I need to loosen the upper looper, but tighten the lower looper. There you go. That was it. 
Everybody's saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many great ideas. I agree. And I cannot, this hour flew by. There were so many great ideas on here. Let me bring up, just in case you want to find Sarah, she's got, um, let's see, where did I just put your website? There you are. So if you want to find, there's my website, Sarah's website, brother's website, Kathy. <laughs> you can find Kathy teaching, by the way on here on the live show and are you going to be going to any stores anytime soon um i'm going to um laura sewing center in palm beach gardens the oh. end of the month and we're going to talk about the luminaire and the scan and cut and the my connection feature and how those work together seamlessly that's awesome tell them hi I've been there. I love that place. It's sunny Florida. They're great brother dealers. Um, they are. I see some people asking, what's the best brother surger? So there's a different versions. And when you go to look for a surger, first, I would just call your brother dealer. Say, hey, do you have any surgers in stock? Sometimes they might have a floor model they're selling. A lot of times they do that, like in the August, September section, uh, when, new, when new things come out, if it's a sewing machine or whatever. Uh, but you want to check that. Ask your brother dealer and say, do you have any classes on these as well? Because, you know, a class is priceless for a serger because then all of a sudden you can learn how to use it <laughs> and get it out of the box. And also check to see what feet it comes with because the like you showed, you had the blind hem, you had the gathering foot. There's a lot of different feet that you might want to have. It's just like a sewing machine, except different. <laughs> you need the there extra feet for some things. But... If you have just a basic one, you can still do so much. And besides just finishing edges, look at how quickly you made that hat, Sarah. Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. All right. Any last minute things? I think I waited a couple seconds because I know there's a delay. And you're welcome. You're welcome. I see somebody asking what serger would be comparable in the UK. I don't know the, the model number, but call your brother dealer and just ask them for the top of the line brother. And that's what she was using here. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies, this was just fantastic. I really appreciate you coming on, celebrating National Surging Month, which is my favorite thing ever. Make a bunch of quick tops, quickly, quickly, fast. And uh, I wish you all a good weekend. Happy Easter for those that celebrate that. And if not, enjoy your weekend. And I will see you back here on the Brother page again on Tuesday. Yay, you too. Thanks, Angela. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Kathy. Bye, Bye Sarah. Bye, Brother Sewing fans. Have a good weekend.